Good morning, friends. It is, wait, it is not morning. It is afternoon. It is 2 p.m. right now. And I am just now eating lunch. I'm having a salad from Trader Joe's. I mentioned this a few vlogs back in my Trader Joe's haul if you want to see that. But anyway, happy Vlogmas day seven. Don't mind the hair roller. But today I just did some work this morning. I filmed and edited a couple of videos for some clients. It took a little longer than I expected, but now I'm eating lunch. And then I want to talk about some tools that I think would be good to have if you are also trying to be a content creator because if you didn't know I am a full-time content creator I have been for about two years now and there are definitely a lot of tools tips and tricks and things like that that I've picked up over the years that I think would be really helpful for those of you that also are trying to go down this career path I guess so I want to share some of my insights and I think it'll be really helpful for you guys so I'm gonna finish eating and we will chat in a bit Okay guys, I am back. I got ready a little bit and if you saw yesterday's video, I tested out these like hair rollers, these velcro hair rollers to curl my hair and here's how it's looking on day two. The curls are definitely still there. It's big and voluminous, super bouncy, so I definitely think the rollers did a great job. And I'll do another update tomorrow to see how they hold up. But anyway, like I mentioned earlier, I wanna talk about some tools and equipments that I think content creators that are just starting out should have. Let me first tell you a little bit about what I do so you get a better idea of why I'm using the tools that I have. So for me, I work with a lot of skincare and beauty brands. They send me their products and I'll film videos with those products, send the finished video back to them and they post it on their organic social media pages or sometimes they'll use them in paid ads. And the types of videos that I make range from product focused videos. So for example, I'll do close up shots of the product packaging. I'll open it up, unbox the product, show the product texture up close, talk about key ingredients, key benefits of the product. Sometimes I do show my face in the video, sometimes I don't show my face at all. Sometimes I'll even film like a little skit where I'm like a character and there's like a little plot line. So that should give you an idea of what I typically film for my clients. But as you all know, I also am a YouTuber. I'm making a YouTube video right now. YouTube I consider more personal work for me and not really like freelance work. And in my head I kind of separate the two where I have like like my freelance work and my personal work, but the tools that I use can be used for either. So anyway, the first thing that I wanted to talk about is the fact that you obviously need something to film your content on, like a camera, but you don't need a fancy big camera. You can just use your phone. Whatever phone you have, you can just use it. Whether you have an iPhone, an Android, a Google Pixel, whatever phone you have, whatever model, it doesn't need to be the latest version, the latest edition. As long as it has a camera on it, you can use that. Especially if you're just starting out and maybe you don't have a lot of money to splurge on all of this fancy equipment, use whatever you have right now and then put a lot of effort into your work. And hopefully you'll generate more income and then you'll be able to upgrade your equipment in the long run. But starting out, you really don't need a lot of fancy stuff. So yeah, the first thing you need is a camera and you can just use your phone. For my freelance clients, I only use my phone to shoot my content. I have the iPhone 13 Pro, I believe, and it is really good. But before I got this, I got this one year ago. But before this, I think I had an iPhone XR and I was just using that to shoot all of my content for my clients back then. And it still worked perfectly fine. Phone camera qualities these days are so good that that's all you really need to film. But I do have some other cameras that I've used in the past to create more personal content like for my YouTube channel. So this is the Canon G7X Mark II. This is a really popular vlogging camera that a lot of vloggers use because it has this flip up screen which is really convenient because it's easier to see yourself when you're filming. But I'm not a huge fan of the quality of this camera anymore. Maybe it's because I've dropped it so much that it affected the quality but I find that it's really fuzzy looking. It doesn't give you a super sharp image like how I want so I honestly don't use this camera anymore. I think I got this for about $500 and then I ended up upgrading to a DSLR camera. This is the Canon EOS Rebel T7i. This is actually a pretty old camera model. I got this maybe like five years ago. I got it used so I want to say it was around $300. Sometimes I will use this to shoot YouTube videos, but it is very big and bulky and heavy. 
So now what I use is what I'm using to record right now and it's the DJI Pocket 2. So if you've been watching my Vlogmas vlogs, you would see that I've been using this little handheld camera. You'll see it whenever I do outfit of the day shots. But it's so small and portable, but so powerful. It has basically all of the features of a DSLR, but in a tiny little pocket-sized camera. I basically only use this when I'm filming vlogs though. And that's why I like to use it when I'm vlogging because it's so portable, easy to move around, it's light, very easy to use, and still has an amazing picture quality. It is about four to five hundred dollars though, but for the ease and convenience, I think it is really worth it. But I'm gonna say it again, you don't need to spend so much money on all of this new equipment. Just use whatever you have right now if you're just starting out. The next thing that I think is super important are tripods. Tripods are essential because you're most likely gonna need something to hold up your camera Especially if you're doing any shots where you need to use both hands Sure, you could stack a bunch of boxes together or something to make a makeshift tripod But that just wastes time and energy. So just get a tripod I have three different tripods that I like to use. So first I have this little mini tripod This one has bendable legs as you can see and then I have this tripod this one can connect to cameras or your phone like it has a little screw on here so you can connect it at the bottom there or I'll connect this like phone attachment twist it on and then you can attach your phone to it but I also have this tripod which is really good for travel and that's because this is actually an extendable tripod so all collapse it's about like a foot long but you can open it up and it's quite long I I think this is about 60, 50 or 60 inches tall. It stands on its own and then you can attach your phone up here. You can adjust the height too and then it collapses super easily like that. It even comes with a little Bluetooth remote. So you can connect it to your phone by Bluetooth and hold it in your hand and take photos. So it's great when you're at home, but if you need to go out and shoot somewhere, it's great because it's super lightweight and portable. The only thing is you can only use your phone with this. There's no other attachment to screw on a camera. But my most used tripod, because I don't usually shoot outside of my house, is the one that you're currently on and it's an Amazon Basics tripod. All of my tripods I got on Amazon, but the one that you're on is my like big boy tripod. You can extend it super tall, change the angle anywhere which way. I do have to use this phone attachment on it if I need to connect my phone to the tripod. You can also find this on Amazon. But yeah, this Amazon Basics tripod is the one that I use the most for my freelance client work and I just love how adjustable it is. Next up, you're gonna need something to edit your content on. And for that, my favorite software to use is CapCut. CapCut is actually made by the same company that makes TikTok so a lot of the effects and things that you see on TikTok you can actually do it on CapCut so that makes it really easy if you create a lot of content for TikTok because you can make your video in CapCut look more native to the TikTok platform because I don't know about you but I absolutely hate editing in the TikTok app I would much rather edit all of my content in a separate app like CapCut and just make it look like it was edited in TikTok. You know what I mean? So CapCut has pretty much all of the editing features that I could ever ask for. Like you can import your own fonts, you can remove backgrounds from videos, you can add text, you can add transitions, effects, you can add overlays, add music, record voiceovers. There's just so many features on CapCut and it's a very seamless experience. I've used other apps like InShot, Video Leap, Splice, but none of them have quite as many features as CapCut, maybe InShot, but I just like CapCut because it looks a lot more sleek. And the coolest thing is that you can also download CapCut on your computer. So they recently made like a computer version because it used to only be for your phone, but now they have a computer version so you can download it on your computer and edit videos on your computer with all the same features as what they have on the phone. And I do use the computer version sometimes because it can be very tedious to edit on your phone because it's such a small screen and especially if I'm in like a time crunch, editing on a computer is just a lot faster for me. That's just because I'm used to it since I've been making YouTube videos for years now. So it's great to have the option to to 
edit on either my phone or my laptop depending on my circumstances and still be able to get the same results on either one. I do also use Final Cut Pro to edit my YouTube videos but for TikToks, Instagram Reels, those like short form videos, I'd much rather use CapCut because there are just so many other transitions, effects, filters and things like that that I like to add. But if you're wondering, I do use Final Cut Pro to edit my YouTube videos. It is expensive. Final Cut Pro is like I think $300 but it's a one-time purchase so it's not like you're paying a subscription price every month. And I should also mention that CapCut is free. If I didn't say that already, CapCut is free and that's another reason why it is the best. And I think the last thing that I want to talk about is lighting. So I think good lighting makes a huge difference in the quality of your videos. It honestly could make or break your video. So make sure you have good lighting in your videos or else the quality is gonna suck and nobody wants to watch a sucky quality video. So make sure you're filming at a time of day when you get the most sunlight in your house. Shoot by a window so you get that natural lighting. But if you're shooting someplace that doesn't have a lot of natural lighting or maybe it's a gloomy day or something, I would get a little video light. So I have two that I use. One of them is a big studio light, which I'll show you in a bit. And the other one is this little clip-on light. So this is pretty inexpensive. It's like $15 on Amazon, but it's so powerful. So this is the lowest brightness, but you can turn it all the way up. It's truly blinding. And you can even change the color. So they have this like white light, a yellow light, and a neutral light and you can clip it on things so you can even clip it to your phone like this turn it on adjust the lighting and start recording so here's a video without the light and here's a video with the light you can see the difference you can change the clip so that it clips on horizontally like this instead and it's rechargeable so you just plug it into a usb and it'll charge that way. So this is super powerful, but so small and compact and also a really inexpensive price. But I do use a bigger light as well, which is the main source of lighting that I use when I film client work. And that's with my Godox SL60 video light. So this is a continuous video light, so it just shines a bright light. You can make it very cool tone or very warm tone. You can also change the brightness. It's basically the same as this little video light, just like a bigger, more heavy duty version. It is expensive though. I I think it was about $160 when I paid for it, but I love it because I don't get a lot of natural sunlight in my apartment. I really, really love that direct sunlight, natural sunlight look in my videos, and I think it makes the products really pop as well. So in order to emulate that direct sunlight look, I use my video light. This is the only video light that I've ever used, so it's the only one that I can really speak on and recommend, but I think it is fantastic. And if you do have the money to splurge, or if you are serious, about creating content, I think it's a really great investment if you also don't get a lot of natural lighting in your space. One thing though is that it only came with the head, so like the light part, and of course like the cord to plug it in. So you're gonna have to buy a stand for it. The stand that I use with it is actually from a ring light that I have, but I don't even use the ring light anymore. I just don't like the way it looks. So I took the stand from that and used it to hold the light. So you may need to also buy a separate stand for your video light if you do end up buying it. So just something to keep in mind. So those are all like the essential tools and equipment that I would recommend for content creators. As usual, I'll leave everything linked in the description box but i hope this helped you out if you have any other questions about being a content creator please leave them in the comments and if anything else exciting happens today i will vlog it because it's vlogmas and because it's vlogmas you should also check out my other vlogs and also subscribe because i'm going to be vlogging every day until christmas but if nothing else happens then that is it for today's video thank you guys so much for watching and i will see you tomorrow for vlogmas day 8 bye